What's up, y'all? It's your boy Isaiah back in the building again for another episode of Let Me Tell You yeah, yeah. Something. And I'm here with my big <laughs> unk, my guy, Big Nate Dog over here as always. <laughs> What's up with you, Nate, man? Let me tell you something, dog. <laughs> Everybody counted them Cowboys out over the first week. Uh huh. Guess what? What was that? They they back. They came back. Now, huh? now not back as in playoff back. Okay. But back in just one win in a row. All That's right. About it. And for all the listeners out there that wonder why are these boys always talking about the Cowboys. Yes, we play for the Cowboys, but we also shoot the show here. Hold out on, of this Dallas. dude ain't no Cowboy fan. I'm not, this dude, don't even. Yes, we played for the Cowboys, yes. but there's only one in here that loves. You know what? The Cowboys. I love the Cowboys for the opportunity <laughs> that they presented me. Right when I was a player, they drafted me. They took a chance they on don't me. Don't do it. I also don't love the Cowboys it. because they brought me back, and I work on a media now. Right. But I'm a homer. Right. Okay. Most most Dallas you, fans are homers. Okay. Right. Would you admit okay. that? Yes. Right. Okay. So I'm from Seattle. So okay. I'm entitled, regardless of who's writing checks for me, yeah. I'm still entitled to be a homer, Nate. Right, okay. Seattle Seahawks, Seattle Sonics, Seattle wow. Kraken. I don't care who Seattle is. Wow. I, I don't care if Seattle putt-putt team. I'm going to cheer for them. I hear you. Hey, you know what? So when we talk, if we ever talk about Seattle, his name changes to Zeus. <laughs> yeah, you know, he, he's the man. He's Zeus. He's a god. He's a warrior. You yeah. know what I'm saying? That's hometown. Okay, that's hometown. That's but hometown. now he's Isaiah, the yeah, cowboy. I'm back to Isaiah now. Yeah. But uh, <laughs> but no, so if you guys are wondering why we're talking about Dallas, you know, we like to do a recap of, of what happened the previous week for all those local Dallas fans. But to your point, Nate, the Dallas Cowboys went out there and got a W after taking the L to Tampa Bay. They yes. come back against Cincinnati, the defending AFC champions. Who happened to be 0-1 coming into that game, but right. they went ahead and took care of them and Joe Burrow. What was your thoughts? Bring up the they were 0-1, Nate, just like, I mean, <laughs> just like Dallas. Dallas was 0-1, uh, too. Well, okay, okay. Somebody was, was going to leave 0-2. Okay, you're right. Right? And it wasn't the Cowboys. And it wasn't the Cowboys. Yes. So you take that. Yeah, take that. How'd you feel about it? The first half, uh-huh. I loved it. Okay. Uh, I love the creativity of the offensive run game. Okay. I love how they got the guards and the centers and the tackles pulling and getting them involved. I like how our, t- our tight ends got in the way just enough on those down blocks okay. to get this to get that outside game going. I think for the first time we saw Tony Pollard in his element, not trying to be hitting up in the middle of yeah. between those two guards, but getting on the edges of those tackles and getting outside. That was nice to see. Okay. Uh, a little bit disappointed in that second half, not only in our offense, because I think we should have slowed the game down with a little bit more of what we was doing in the first, first half, half. Yep. With, the, with the O-line. You know, and I'm speaking from an O-line perspective because sure. that is how we're going to win and lose games. And – I think we should have been walking out of that huddle after eight minutes or more in the fourth quarter, 19 plays. We should have been not with a hurry-up offense, but like, hey, you know what? Snap this ball with two seconds left. Yeah, take Let's advantage. Let's give a chance. Four-minute offense. Yeah. yeah, thank you. Four-minute offense. Make sure that our defense get every opportunity. For sure. And, uh, and we got to cut down on the penalties. Yeah. We, now they did a better job a, there. We, we didn't have a lot of penalties, but when the penalties came, it hurt. Yeah, it hurt. Yeah. yeah, understood. All right. So for those that are wondering what we're going to talk on today, you know, obviously we're we're kind of doing a recap of the Cowboys, but we're going right. to touch on opportunity. All right. So some of the opportunities, right? We're going to get to our life and some of the right. things that we right. capitalized on, and some of the opportunities we didn't capitalize on. Right. Uh, but we want to go to the some of the Cowboys had some opportunities. Okay. Right. You think okay. about the the left tackle position. Right. He was forced into an opportunity. Uh, that Tyron Smith uh, vacated, uh, and now you got the young feller, Tyler yes, Smith. Yes. Right? How do you think he's taking advantage of the opportunity that's presented to him? I'm giving him a B minus. So he's passing. Yeah, because of his effort. Okay. He, he, he he's getting out there and he's getting better. He's fighting. You know, and and, and I'm talking about his effort. Yep. Uh, I think on his um, technique, he's still about a C plus. Okay. And uh, his thinking. Of being aware of when he has help and not has yeah. help, that's probably about a C plus. Yeah, he's gotten better. So with that's that. why I got him at a B minus okay. because uh, he's working on it, and you see he's going through these growing pains at Mr. Jones. So sure. he's taking advantage of his opportunities. But now my biggest fear is don't move him. Let him stay there, regardless of what happened with Tyron Smith. Yep. What, whatever happens with Peters, let him stay there. Yep. And let him work it because that's the most. Uh, electrifying position on offensive line. For That's sure. the most uh, most important. Yeah. Yes. Thank next you. That's the center. Yeah. For sure. Okay. So all right. So Tyler Smith took advantage of his opportunities. He's yes, going to he win. Did. He's going to continue to get better. Yeah. Um, but he's shown that he has the fight and he has some right. dog in him. Okay. Um, there's some promise there. Cooper Rush, the now QB one 
short term for Dallas Cowboys, he's had an opportunity. How do you think he showed up coming off of last year's Minnesota game where he stepped in and filled in for Dak Prescott, won a big game against those guys, had a big passing game. Now all of a sudden he comes in here against the defending AFC champions and gets a W. Are you are you feeling like he took advantage of the opportunity? You feeling like you've seen enough? <laughs> you feeling like it's enough to to go for the next three games? Phone, I, mean, I gotta tell you something, <laughs> bro. Let me tell you something. Tell the real Nate, because people is, people are hyped right now about him. This is what I saw. Okay. And I'm speaking like Mike Urban, trying to be very no, you're proper good. You're in good. my pronunciation. <laughs> you tell me if I'm wrong, and okay. I want you to tell me. I'm, I'm, well, I'm, I'm going to say a statement, I want you to respond. I got you. He was precise okay. and no hesitation on releasing the ball. Okay. He knew where Noah was going to be. He knew where C.D. Lamb was going to be, where his tight end was going to be, and he dropped back one, two, three, boom. Decisive. One, two, three, four, five, boom. And as the game went on, he got a couple of seven-step drops, and he was decisive. Yep. You know, and, and I'm not saying that Dak uh, is not decisive, okay. but I'm talking about from watching Dak before he got injured. And I'm and, and maybe Tampa's a better team. Maybe they gave us more sure. multiple looks, more yeah. better players. I'm I'm judging from what I saw from Krupa Rush. He he released that ball. Gotcha. And and a lot of times that puts you in rhythm. That keeps you in rhythm. To be able to say, hey, I need you here. If if, if it's a five yard slant, I'm letting the ball go, man. I, it's a three step drop. Mm. And he seemed like he was more. Uh, decisive. Yeah. He was more sure of what he was doing. Now, tell me where, I, where I'm wrong at. What I don't I think that see? you're wrong there, Nate, oh, dog. Okay. Where I I do think he was decisive. I think he went towards his comfort zone, which right. was his man, Noah Brown, who right. he's been playing with on, right. the, on the practice squad, the second squad, all the squads, right, <laughs> since 2017. See, right. So there's chemistry there. Yes. So, of course, he looked like he was decisive because I'm throwing to my guy. This is right. what we do. So we've been doing this every day. So I don't disagree with you there. I do believe that luck was on his side. No, I know his name's not Andrew Luck. His name's Cooper Rush. Right. But Luck was on his side. side. Yeah. And because a lot of people point to specifically the last drive where he threw that in route to Noah Brown. And everybody's like, oh, that was a big play that really pushed him forward to be able to kick the field goal. Well, what people don't know is the ball was supposed to be going to hinder shot. Yes, and it was. On the crossing route. Right. And then it was tipped. Yes. It, it was, was tipped. Batted hard. Batted hard, right? Right. There was another play in the game where Hubbard got his hands on the ball, and it just fell out the hands right. of the cornerback that right. almost intercepted it. So I That's think right. that luck was on the side of Cooper Rush. I think he was effective in what they asked him to do. I don't believe that it's going to be enough going forward to win ball games because – there's going to be a day where the defense doesn't play like you've been seeing them play. Mm -hmm. And when that day shows up, the offense needs to be able to take over, right? Because complimentary football. Right. The, the offense needs to be able to take over and score a bunch of points. And I'm not sure that they're in position to do that right now. You know, I, I just believe this. As long as you protect your offensive line uh -huh. by mixing in enough runs and enough variety of runs uh, that – that goes to the strength of your, your your offensive line. This is not an offensive line. Now, Tyler Smith is a, is a mauler. Yep. You know, he loves to mix it up. Uh, but my left guard, Farniak, is not a mauler. He's an edge guy. He's a guy that needs to get out there in space, try to yeah. get things open. Because if you go power for power, they're going to they're gonna defeat Which is why Peter's going to be in there this center. week, most likely. Same with the center. <laughs> now, the right, the right guard is all world. Yeah. But to say this, he is looking as sharp uh, with – a bunch of guys around him, so he isn't looking as sharp. He got to pick up his technique, I think, yep. a little bit better. But he is still all world for sure. My right tackle finally was, had yep. enough runs where he just can't get exposed on the pass. Facts. You see what I'm saying? I'm with you. I'm yeah. with you. Okay, so we that's a little bit of synopsis. Okay, we'll blow over a couple guys. Dennis right. Houston had an opportunity, and now all of a sudden he's no longer with the team. Um, as of the t filming of this show, we're filming this on Wednesday, airing on Thursday, right. and maybe he makes it on waivers. I don't know. We'll see about that opportunity that he had. But um, going to some of the opportunities that we've had in life is Nate. I want to lean and say, is there one opportunity that you did not take advantage of in your life? That still, at the age of 21 it. years old, okay, yeah. for you, yeah. hangs over your head. Because I know there's one for me for sure that hangs over. What about you? You know, I'm, I'm 60, so that means I'm six years old. But anyway, <laughs> I'm going to tell you, this one here, it's a bittersweet. Okay. I mean, you can take it however you want. 
In 83, I came out of school. Right. One of the greatest drafts ever. I wasn't drafted, but I was one of the greatest players. But anyway, <laughs> let them know. <laughs> yeah, let you know. <laughs> you know, I went to the Washington Commanders. Back then, they had another name. Yep. And Joe Bugle, the offensive line coach, wanted me to make that team. Coach Gibbs brought me into his office and looked at me and said, son, you have a great opportunity. Mm. What are you doing? Because I was so immature, just all about fun and having fun. And, you know, a lot of people are like, oh, man, you shouldn't have blew that. You know what? Y'all ain't me. This yeah. is Nate. I was having fun doing what I thought was great for Nate at the time. Yep. And I got cut mm. on the last cut. And I look back. First year? Yeah, yeah. When I coming out as a rookie. Yeah. I look back and I say to myself, and then and then several months later, right? I'm riding, I'm riding. <laughs> and they over in town for playing the Raiders. It won. And I'm like, I could have. Mm. Yeah, I Wow. I blew that. That Man. was an opportunity well, to miss. What would you have changed? About that opportunity that you missed this, out on. I wasn't mature. I wasn't, I wasn't. You wasn't ready for it. I wasn't ready for it, man. And and even when I went back to fam, you know how you go back to school. Even when I went back, you know, everybody like, oh, man, they got you. I said, no, nah, I got myself. There you go. You were you mature know, enough to identify yeah, that, yeah, though. Yeah, I'm like, when when you got the office line coach looking at you, man, because I remember, I'll give you a little story. Okay. I remember, man, we all went out drinking. <laughs> all right. And, and. Veterans and rookies, everything. Boy, I was I was going Taking at back. it. Oh, yeah, yeah. Next day, boy, I had one of the worst practices ever. After <laughs> practice, I'm th- I went over there and throwing it all up. And the old line coach looked at me, Joe Bugles looked at me and said, man, what are you doing? You drank with my boys last night. This one, it was the Hogs. It had all them great players, Russ Grimm, Joe Jacob, and all these great players. You know, Mark May. He said, you was out with them, right? Yeah. You went beer for beer, right? I said, yeah. He said, probably a little bit more. I said, yeah. He said, did they finish practice? Did they have great practices? Okay. He said, you can't do that unless you can come out here and have a great practice. Know your limits. Yeah. and uh, Keeping up I with just, the Joneses. Yeah, I shook up, I shook my head. About a week later, the, the, uh, the, the head coach, Nate, he looked at me right in my eye. You got a great opportunity here. What's Dang. up? Dang. If that ain't telling you they wanted you to make their squad. Yeah. That's rough, man. At least you, at least, <laughs> that sucks. Yeah, but at least. <laughs> what you the, think about that, that man? That sucks, man. But it's, that's the real, right? Yeah. That's the real. And yeah. I think that a lot of people struggle not only capitalizing on their opportunities, but not recognizing and yeah. identifying when an opportunity is present. And that's probably the hardest thing and the hardest thing to try to give advice on because every situation is different. Mm-hmm. But. You know, to that point, you that's something that you think about probably often. Yeah. Right? It's like, man, things with me, even, even though you had an amazing career, mm-hmm. right? You had a career most most players dreamed of, but that still hangs over your head as a missed opportunity. Even if I'd have made that squad and got a Super Bowl ring and got cut and still came to the Cowboys, I'd have had four Super Bowl rings. Yeah. In the <laughs> that's how I look at it. You know what I'm saying? And I'd have played for a team that I hate. Yep. And I would have played for the team that I love. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> That's crazy. So yeah. one of the – I've had many opportunities, and I don't have regrets. I don't do regrets, really. I, I have what ifs. Mm. Right, what would have happened had yeah. I done it, but yeah. I have regrets. Yeah. I try to stay prayed up and make sure I make the right decision, right. hopefully, on most things. But one of the, the opportunities that I did not take advantage of that mm. hangs over my head every single day, Nate, yeah. is at the age of 16. 16 years old? Right, right. 16 or 17? I think it might have been 16. I had an opportunity to go pro baseball. Wow. And I tell people to this day, I was a far better baseball player than I was a football player. Played six years in the league, was blessed to get a Super Bowl, never was the dude in the NFL, Uh, just never really found my footing, but still had a respectable career in terms of years played. But I would still be playing baseball right now. Wow. And the opportunity, I was really good at baseball. I started playing at the age of, I played center field. I played center field, and I picked up the baseball when I was six years old, and I never put it down. 
I loved it growing up there back there in Seattle. I thought I was King Griffey Jr. Couldn't tell me nothing. Nigga. I had right. shoes. I couldn't afford the sweats and all that jazz. Right. But <laughs> but I had, I thought I was Griffey. And um, I would walk down to the Kingdom, you know, back in the day and go watch him play. And and I try to mimic everything that he did. And I was always working on my technique. And I would spend hours outside, you know, whether it's, you know, throwing a ball against that little staircase on our right. hill or, right. you know, using my mom's softball glove. And I just right. had a passion for it. I didn't touch a football until I was 13. Right. Uh, so... I would, I, would, I would go play for these select baseball teams. You know, we didn't have a lot of money, so I, I played in the inner city. We actually played for – we had our own little league. It was called – we played – it was a minor Negro leagues. Right, So right, we were right. the Homestead Grays, right. you know, the Kansas City Monarchs. You know, right. you know, we was acting like we were Satchel Page and all these other cats <laughs> back in the day. So we would play air ball. You know, we didn't have a ball. We were just playing, you know. So it, that, was my, that was my dream. That was my passion. I always wanted to make it in the league in baseball. So all of a sudden, football comes up, and I'm like, okay, cool. That's just another sport I pick up, along with track and along with uh, with basketball. I played four sports. Right. But as I was playing on these select teams, you know, I would be 13 going to go play with 17-year-olds, you know, in these tournaments. I, I went and played in Dodger Stadium. I was playing at USC, Arizona State. I mean, I was I was flying all over balling, the place, man. balling. And I was just a young cat. But I, I knew how to play the game, and people wanted me on their team. So at the age of 13, I started getting scouted. Scouts would come up to me after the game and talk to me and ask me questions. And I didn't know what the heck they were talking about. I was just playing ball. You know, a little cat right. from the hood that wearing, you know, Old Navy sweats and a, and a freaking right. do-rag, you know? Yeah. <laughs> and yeah. I got a call um, to, to go to a tryout. When I was, uh, I think I was, I was 16, and I got a call. My my athletic director, who was my basketball coach, and his name was Wayne Floyd. Mm-hmm. He's like, hey, Zay, man, you know, the, the Mariners want you to come out, you know, and go to one of their tryouts. I was like, all right, cool. You know, so I went out there, and he, I remember him driving me because I couldn't get out there. It was in, it right. was in Tacoma. It was right. Tacoma Rainier. is about an hour away from the house. He drove me out there and drops me off, and, again, I'm wearing my sweats and, you know, a little T-shirt, my mom's softball glove. You know, I got a little bandana on my head, and all these guys are in uniforms. And I'm like, man, what is what is, what this? is this? You know what yeah. I'm saying? I'm out here with all these grown cats. You know, I'm like, these cats is old, you know? <laughs> I'm like, so I get there, and the first thing they make you do is run a 60. And I ran, I was like, okay, whatever. I never ran a 60 before. I heard it a 40, you know, because of yeah. football. But all right, let's do this. Ran a 60, and I ran by the, the scout, and the scout didn't even look at me. Nate, he got his clipboard in his right. hand. And as I'm walking back, he's like, stand back. Can you run faster than that? And I'm like, Yes, sir. Like, I, th- I think so. That's my first time ever doing this. He's like, right. okay. And he told me what my time was, and I get back, and I'm like, dude, what the heck? And all the guys are looking at me. They're like, hey, man, what'd you, what'd you run? What'd you do? What'd you do? I'm like, he said I ran a 6'3". I don't know. He said, you ran a what? Right. And I was like, I didn't know what was good, what was bad. Right. right. But apparently that was super fast. So right. from that point, I was getting looked at at a, at a high level, obviously at a right. high level. From there, I went to the last tryouts for the Mariners and, um, you know, walked in there not knowing what the heck I was doing. But, you know, using my first time using a wooden bat. We didn't have no right. wood bats in the hood, Nate. That's you know, right. That's right. You know what I'm saying? So, that was a stick. That was a stick. Absolutely <laughs> a broomstick. Absolutely. Yeah. So yeah. Was my first time using that was at the last tryout. And I, did, I still didn't understand the opportunity I had at that moment. Right. I knew it was big because I was in the safe cold field now. Mariners calling this workout. Whatever. I'm just a kid showing up ready to play. Wow. Not knowing that was the invite only, uh, uh, invite only tryout for the Mariners prior to the draft. Invite every right. organization brings the guys that they're their looking top at. Guys, yeah, they say like the Cowboys their top thirty. Absolutely, right. You bring you bring right. those guys in very right. much so, just like baseball. Baseball is just like that. So they bring they bring me in for this workout, and I I have a good showing, and then right right before the draft, I think the day before the draft, you know, I get a phone call, and I'm driving. And is is one of the you know executive whatever guys for the for the Mariners at the time. He was like, "Hey, uh, we're looking at taking you here in the, in, the, in the first round. You you good with that?" And I was like, "I'm sorry, what was that?" Right. Wow. And I'm literally now I'm pulled over on the side of a road. Now I'm right. like, "What is that?" He's like, "We're looking at drafting you in the first round. Like you like you good with that?" Now back then, there was no playing multiple sports really, except right. for like right. Dion. You know, right. they were, right. you didn't really have that option. There was they didn't even want you to go to college. You know, they were grabbing guys straight out of high school, like you're coming up right. to the majors. And I sat there and I told that gentleman on the phone, Well, what about college? Like, you know, like you dub, like I committed to you right. dub to go play football. And he laughed. He laughed at me. And he was like, There ain't no football, son. This is we're about to give you a lot of money. And I told him right then and there, I can't do it. 
I can't do it. And he was like, do you want to go talk to your parents about this? <laughs> you sure you don't want to yeah. do this? And I told him no. And that I went to go play, you know, my rookie year, my, my freshman year at University of Washington, but I ended up stopping playing baseball. But that was the end of my baseball career. Right. Wow. But to this day, after sustaining all the injuries that I had in football, after not being like the guy like I was in college, you know, all the things, not playing quarterback like I really wanted to play, you know, uh, aside from being behind Tom Brady, I always think about the opportunity that I missed but took, did enough to, to, to have the opportunity, right? right I did right. enough leading up to it, even though I didn't understand what those workouts were. Right. I did enough to give myself the opportunity, but I still think about the what if. What if I would have went to baseball? Wow. You know, I watch guys like, like Aaron Judge, you know, hit, you know, tie a Bay Roof, and he's probably about to sign a half-billion-dollar deal this offseason. He's like, real, man. Shh. Aaron Judge, real. He's a big dude. He's huge. Yeah. He's huge, but... That's the number he's one. Like Bill yeah, he's bigger than me. He's way <laughs> bigger than me. That's a large human, man. Yeah. But that's the one opportunity that really hangs over my head. Like, man, what if? You know, what if that? Yeah. And then I, and then there's opportunities that I didn't take of you know, that I that I also took, but didn't do enough of it. You know, I, right. I didn't I didn't do my best. And that's time in the league. There was teams that I played for that I just didn't do everything that I possibly could have right. to change my situation because I was so used to just being. Being good. Right, right. Wow. And I didn't do what was necessary to level up. Right, At right. the highest level. So that would say those are probably the two things that probably sit on my mind all the time and that helped me make better decisions. It helped me to identify opportunities and helped me to make sure I execute on them to ensure that I don't have these thoughts hanging over my head going forward. And see, the opportunities that came to me that I took mm -hmm. advantage of, People hear me say this a thousand times was Charles Haley. Okay. Charles Haley was the best opportunity that I've ever had because he came in and he said, Nate, this is what you need to do. You're a Pro Bowl player. You're an all-pro player. This is what we're going to do. And we worked out. Huh. I started work for the first time in my life. I, I was in shape in the NFL. I was just getting by on skill. Yeah, and uh, me and, and when Charles came in, I think right before our first Super Bowl, and boom, I started working out. That's when I got my first Pro Bowl and All Pro, and wow. And for, you know, every year after that, you know, during the season, uh, after practices, before practice, me, me, Charles, and Tony Tober, we would work out, man, and I would be in the greatest shape of my life, man. I got wow. six. That was one of my best. Opportunities that I took advantage of because I could have told y'all, man. Yeah, we're gonna forget you, man. Get out of yeah. here, man. But nah, did you man. did you recognize what that was? And obviously, when he was yeah. inviting you, did you get it? Because yeah. there's no there's no way you saw. Okay, if I work out with Charles Haley, I'm gonna this this and this is gonna follow, right? I'm gonna get Pro Bowls. Yeah. I'm gonna win Super Bowls. Like you, there's no way you saw that the result of what was being presented to you at that moment. So what about that opportunity made you say, "All right, here we go. Let's try it." He. Because uh, he man, he stopped me, you know, and he looked me right in the eye. Because when Charles first came to our team, me and you continue to do these shows, you'll probably always hear me tell this story. Mm -hmm. He came to our team and in front of everybody. He won no shame in his game. He stood up cussing. I know every one of y'all, da-da-da-da. This is Troy. He started with Troy. This is what you do good. This is what you do, da-da-da. He broke the, almost all the starters now. What you do, and then you know, like wow, about a couple of days later, uh, well, about before the season was gonna start, he said, Man, you know, I look at film of you, man, and you, if I, you know, the first six games, first seven games, you, you the best, and everybody be thinking you finna do something special, but then the second half of the season, you get all out of shape, mm. you know, you don't look the same, and be like, Who is this dude? This ain't the dude I saw at the beginning of the year, because I mean, you know, you go to drinking, yeah, you go to yeah, eating, yeah. losing. You, who cares? You know, different yeah. mindset. Wow, different mindset. Well, how, did, how did you take that? Uh, and I just looked at him. I'm looking. I'm finna go back at him. He said, "But we gonna change that." Yeah. You know, and I'm saying this nice. Yeah, I ain't saying this the way Charles said it. Yeah, and he said, "Man, you need to meet me over here. You, if you need to go home right quick, like which was about two hour, an hour there, an hour back, depending on the traffic. It was thirty minutes there, thirty minutes back, depending on the traffic." For sure. Yeah, so I stopped even going home. I would just wait, and we'll work out as we get out of meetings. Yeah. 
and uh, we'd do the stair step for some days. We'd do the uh, elliptical some days. We'd, you know, uh, walk some days, yeah. jump the rope some days. It was always cardio. And uh, we would do it after practice, man, on Monday, Tuesday, and Wednesday, okay. and every now and then Thursday. And then we'll rest Friday and Saturday. Yeah. Man, I'm, I'm serious. I'm serious, man. I find myself really finishing dudes. You know, I had like more pancakes. I mean, I, I could pay road grade. Yeah, yeah. That was me, though. Yeah. I was a D9. I could, I could move earth, bro. <laughs> I'm telling you. It, uh, yeah. That was awesome. So, My man. quickness, everything changed, bro. But you knew. I mean, you humbled yourself. Yeah. Yeah, because if a dude tell you I'll meet you over here, and, 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 and he's sitting there waiting on you, where you at your fats? Yeah. Yo, man, I'll be going back at him, but you know, yeah. but but I'll be, was there. I'll be stair stepping after yeah. about 30 minutes. Ahead, like, hey, man, we're gonna get off <laughs> two more, two more minutes, you yeah. know, like, oh man, it just my whole life changed as far as how people looked at me. When I went to that first Pro Bowl, how dudes was kind of like, after we done won that Super Bowl, yeah, too, yeah. dudes kind of looking at me like, what changed about this dude? Cause they, you know, before like big, big noon, how you doing? Da da da. I was that guy in the league that everybody knew that if I if you met me, you was gonna love me because we're gonna sit up and we're gonna yeah, train, yeah. we're gonna laugh, we're gonna talk noise, we're yeah. gonna have fun. I could do it all night. for sure. That, I was that guy. Okay. But then after getting with Charles, no, but they, uh, I'm still the joking, joking yeah, guy. Yeah. I'm just the guy that'll run you over now. Yeah. <laughs> you know. Yeah. yeah. But isn't that funny though? How and this is for everybody and regardless of whatever situation you're in, not just football, just in life, especially business. Yeah. Opportunities. When you look back at the stories of people that have taken advantage of opportunities, there's usually usually a, a <laughs> an element of being humble. Yes. To take advantage of it. And, you know, you just mentioned, you know, your story. The one I think about is when I got cut and I got released by when you guys hear the term waved. <laughs> okay, oh, yeah, I can tell that bothers yeah, you. Yeah, the bit. term waved. <laughs> when you see that, just just replace that word with fired. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. When I was fired <laughs> by the Dallas Cowboys. Okay, you know, dog got waved. Was, yeah. Anyways, when I was fired by the Dallas Cowboys, the next phone call I got was Bill Belichick, and Bill Belichick said, "I want to bring you out here as a quarterback." I was like cool that's what i that's what i do i've been trying right. to figure out this receiver thing right but what i do is quarterback mm. but we want to bring you out here on practice squad right i could easily said no right i could probably could have got all the way in the way like it does for most people right right in most situations for home i say everybody pride gets in the way of everybody it's right. just a matter of whether it, it it freaking blocks your blessing or not right and i said yes and I had to humble myself to say, bruh, you haven't shown who you used to be. Right. Right? You've been injured. Right? You're playing a new position. You ain't grasped that all the way yet. So I had to really, like, self-analyze myself. Be like, bruh, like, you you can't sit high and mighty. You haven't shown nothing in the league. Right, right. Wow. That was me talking to myself. Yeah. Right? Because had I been the guy from, from college or, you know, the guy that was super confident, the practice squad, get the heck out of here. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like like that that pride would have blocked whatever was coming to me. Right, right. But instead I humbled myself and I said, I'll take advantage of this opportunity. And by going out there and taking advantage of the opportunity on a practice squad, I was able to show my work ethic. I was able to to learn other people and how they approach the game. I was able to digest all that and prove my worth to the point where I earned my way back onto a roster. Right, right. And that so gave how long me did it take? Six weeks. Right. Because their playbook is crazy. <laughs> right. But but at the time, I was the only practice squad guy in the history of Bill Belichick, to my knowledge, that was what was told to me at right. least at the time, to travel with the team. So right. I was back, I was a third string quarterback on the roster, but I was on practice squad and I was traveling with the team to away right. games. Wow, wow. Didn't happen. Bill Belichick doesn't take practice squad guys. I don't think most teams don't take practice squad guys right. even today. Um, one well, day might have changed now because they call guys up. But right. back then, if you're a practice squad, you just use at the crib. Like you're part of the team, but you ain't really a part of the team. You know how that goes. Mm -hmm. uh, so 
I was traveling with the team. So I was taking advantage of the opportunity and understanding that he, this is something outside of himself. So if my if the person that's providing me the opportunity has faith in me, much like Charles Haley had right. faith in you, right. right? You have to be humble enough to say, all right, let's see where this goes. Yes. Let's see where this goes. Wow. So that's, yeah. Yeah, you know, lot of, you know, business opportunities, I'm going to tell you the one that I missed, and it'll never come back. It'll never come back. Was I was told to buy property at a phenomenal, Jesus. low price, right where we work at during the seventies, right where we work at, at a phenomenally low price, and I didn't do it. <laughs> and I did not do it. Dang. And I look at it. It was sometimes when you see me just staring out out at thinking the about field, it. I'll be like, <laughs> that could have been mine. <laughs> Because they would have had to come to daddy to get the rest yeah. of this. <laughs> Isn't that crazy, man? That's crazy. That's crazy. And see, one thing I know about the Joneses, they, don't make no mistakes, they want man. something. Yeah. They they going they gonna to offer it enough where if you do turn it down, we'll be back in hell, man. Let me tell you something. Yeah, they just yeah, offered me, me this, and yeah. I turned it down. <laughs> Jeez. Yeah. So, yeah, that's that's the crazy thing about opportunity, man. And I'm sure everybody has a lot of stories out there. That's just a few of myself and Nate's. But, you know, I guess if you had to give one piece of advice, Nate, in regards to people as they go through their daily lives and the opportunities, whether it be for them or it be for their kids, what would be one piece of knowledge that you would like to drop on them? What's one nugget? You know, I, I don't know how deep most people are. I know how deep you are. When, when a person comes to you and look you in your eye and presents you with a believable or unbelievable situation, yeah. take in the information, get the content, Pray on it. Yep. And see where it leads you. Yep. Sometimes it leads you like no. Sometimes it leads you like, let me try this. Yeah. But first, with key word, humble yourself. Take pride and set him over there yeah, on, yeah. on the stool and, and let humble work with you for a minute. Hey, y'all heard Nate Dog right there, y'all. Okay. Take a little piece of humble pie. Sometimes <laughs> yeah. you gotta put your toe in the water before you can swim. <laughs> yeah. <All right. laughs> I like that. I like that. <laughs> hey, so we appreciate y'all tuning in, man. You guys tune in next week for another episode of Let Me Tell You Something. We might have somebody here for you. Yes, we you never know. Ooh. See you next week. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I like that. Yeah.